and welcome to the CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 265, even more instanter messaging for Friday, August 25th, 2023 from Zanata Consulting. I'm Brad Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. Yes, we shall. Another week. The year is flying by. Man, do we have a big, big, big show. Um, Some things we talked about last week dropped, and we're excited, and there's a bunch of Zoho news here. So, Tyler, let's just jump right on into the show, and let's look at announcements and events. Let's do it. So, if you are not aware, we have an online Zoho community called Club Zanata, Club Z for short. Save yourself a couple syllables. Anyway, it is club.zanata.com, and if you head over there, well, basically, we've got everything you would want. General discussion, Q&A, we do a show called Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. You can ask us questions there, and we will answer them. But we also track all of the events and any announcements, and if you you click into uh, kind of the scroll down the side here, if you're watching on YouTube, you can click into the events. And you can see everything that we are doing, as well as Zoho. We'll talk about us first. We have our usual Zaz and CRM Zen shows. Uh, one more Zaz here left in the month of August. Um, I guess this is the last Zen show in August, huh? And then we will uh, like do September with a bunch of uh, Zaz and CRM Zen shows. And we're going to do a Zoho Sales IQ full product overview. I think the last one was 2020 time. Yeah, it's been on too long, I think, on the Sales IQ side. So we're going to refresh that one, cover some of the new functionality. I mean, there's whole new bots that are available now that were back on our last uh, last webinar. So be sure to check that one out. I know a lot of our clients kind of end up using Sales IQ in uh, one way or another. Yeah. So that's going to be good. And if we look over at what is going on in the world of Zoho for events, uh, they have got in September, it looks like an Axe, the experts collaborate with Show. That's the Zoho Show. And then a Creator Tech Connect series that is uh, going to be running for 2023, Deluge and Crowd Functions in Zoho Creator in the Americas. So they've got that on September 12th, September 14th. I'm sure more things will pop up. Zoho tends to announce their webinars and little events and training sessions. I don't know, just like a day before, two days before. They don't give you a lot of warning. But uh, we try to keep track of them and put them up here as well. And so anyway, that's going to wrap up our announcement events and let's head over and check out the news so tyler we are going to spend uh, quite a bit of time on this show talking about zoho's new um field service management tool yeah uh, it is uh a winner <laughs> it turns out and you did an entire video on it which we'll talk about here later on in the show they dropped it last week they launched this thing. They started talking about this thing at um, Zoholix 2019 in Austin, Texas. Kind of came on the market in 2020, was pulled off the market in a couple months later. Yeah, I think and has in been in 2020. Yeah. It didn't yeah. last long on its first go around. No. And uh, it then has spent quite a bit of time in beta getting some spit polish. And uh, it looks like we have uh, we have a winner here. So they basically have done a nice job with it. And so this is announcing the part of the CRM integration. So out of the box, you actually have to install a separate CRM integration. Is that what, what's going on? Just like yep, you would with books uh, or anything else? Yeah, it's installed via the marketplace. So it's not under that like primary, you know, Zoho apps tab that you would go to install like uh, books, projects, things like that. Um, but essentially it will sync over all the relevant data to FSM. So accounts, contacts, products, sales orders, and deals. Um, as you look at this, there is, they do kind of have one little error in this uh, diagram that they gave. It does not sync your CRM products as assets. It syncs them as items or services, and then you associate them to clients as assets. So that kind of lives in between the two. You'll reference the products, but you'll, you know, create those assets separately. Um, nice thing is that I kind of liked about this is it gives you the opportunity to kick off the request, uh, which is kind of the beginning of the FSM process from a lot of different modules. So you can do it from the account, the contact, the deal, as well as the sales order, which is nice. We do have some customers, you know, like smaller servicing companies that don't really have a deal pipeline. You know, a customer submits a request and it kind of just goes straight to a sales order. There's no, you know, deal stages necessary. So you can actually kick off the FSM flow from a variety of different places. 
Um, and then it will track that whole progress through against that record. Um, so, you know, the core flow in FSM is a request to an estimate, to a work order, to an appointment, and then lastly, to an invoice. And so all of those will actually be tracked against wherever you kicked off that particular um, particular record, whether it's a deal, contact, et cetera. Um, so nice integration uh, across the board. I mean, it's pretty much what you would need, right? As you're kind of tying these two apps together. Um, obviously, a lot can then be automated between these two apps. They both got Deluge and APIs. So, you know, if there are any gaps in this that you need in particular, uh, you should be able to accomplish that um, just with a little bit of elbow grease and workflow rules. All right, we're going to talk about uh, the FSM app a little later on in the show. Um, I think it's going to be confusing for a lot of you if you've listened to us for the last four or five years or you've talked to Tyler and I on sales calls and you needed FSM. We have said, sorry, Zoho doesn't have one and Zoho FSM is not ready for prime time. And um, I would say we've been saying use Zooper or maybe build yourself a custom creator application. Uh, but I think our new recommendation is that this is ready to go so much so that I think this has already been added to our Website under our resource library, and this app is up there with a yes. So a lot yeah. of hard work for the FSM team um, getting this thing out. Uh, nice job, Zoho. Clearly, this is going to be a big one. I mean, yeah, it's a big market for them. It's it's one of the more commonly requested things that uh, I think people kind of bring to us. Uh, obviously, Zoho's client base being more small to mid-sized businesses. Um, you know, those types of businesses oftentimes do field service, right? They're replacing a router. Right. They are updating something in the electrical. Um, and so this is a really nice application. The big thing here, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later, is it does solve for a few things that have always been tricky to do in, you know, CRM with custom functionality. So uh, again, should solve a problem for a decent amount of people who are on the Zoho stack. Oh, hang around. <laughs> Moving on with the news. Uh, you can now, they've now expanded the subform field limits. If you're unaware in CRM, they have something called subforms. This again was something that was released in 2019. Um, and they continue to uh, make some enhancements to this. It used to be seven was the number of fields you could have in a subform. This lives in a, in a CRM record. You can have, I think two of these per record per module and you basically, uh, Basically, it creates like a grid, like almost think of it as like a spreadsheet and you can have up to seven fields and then you can do things like subtotals and other things. They're, they're kind of nice. Is it more than it used to be? You could have a hundred rows. So you could have seven fields. Then it was 10 fields. And is yeah. it still a hundred rows? Maybe still a hundred rows per record. 200. Anyway, they've increased it from 10 to 25, which is kind of crazy because um, it's great. It's a lot, but imagine you've got 25 separate cells going across your, you know, your CRM record uh, page. You're going to be doing a lot of left to right scrolling, it would seem to me. I don't know if you're going to be able to stack them or not, but uh, super nice. Super yeah, nice. absolutely. I mean, a huge, huge update. You know, the um, subforms create a really nice UI for things like, you know, you're on a deal and you're putting together some quoting information, things like that. 10 fields does work for a lot of people, um, but for more complicated data that you're looking to store in a subform, just not quite enough uh, a lot of the time. So yeah, raising this up, huge improvement for subforms, um, you know, opens up the doors. And I think, I think because, um, you know, late last year, they redid the quotes subform, like the native quotes and sales orders and kind of replaced it with a more modular subform. So I'd be curious to see if this 25 applies to that as well, because um, that would be a huge update for that kind of quote sales order invoice process that lives in uh, CRM. For sure, for sure. All right, and moving on with the news, uh, Zoho in CRM, still in CRM here, they're deprecating the activities module. Uh, there's been a long time coming in the activities module. They have calls, meetings, and tasks. Uh, and basically they've all lived in one. This has been problematic. Um, this is why Zoho CRM does not have Kanban views for task management, which, you know, drives a lot of people crazy um, because they can't because they had all these things lumped into one module and you basically couldn't split them out. And they've been really struggling with this. <laughs> it's been quite a, especially how yeah, they've, they've set up the views and they've been making a lot of changes. This gives me hope. Um, the fact that, you know, 
this is going to completely go away on November 1st, that you will no longer have an activities module. You will now have calls, meetings, and tasks. I think we're close. And this might help yeah. them. You know, one of the big things they've always wanted to do was integrated task management. This goes a long way towards that as well. I mean, this has always been a problem that you needed to re-architect the CRM to kind of work with everything else. So, yeah. Yeah, there's kind of some pros and cons to this. You know, like one of the pros is it becomes a lot easier to pull reports on specific types of data. Like if you want to pull a call report, right? Previously, you'd have to always filter that based on activity type, you know, and then the columns that are relevant for each of these are going to be totally different, you know, so it causes some lack of clarity when it gets into reporting. I'd say the one downside of this is there are times when a customer wants like a total activities report, you know, like, hey, show me all the open deals and every activity, whether it's a call, a meeting, a text, right? So something right. like that, or not a text, uh, a task, something like that would be, be a little trickier to pull a report on just because those are now going to be in different data sets. Um, Zoho Analytics is still going to be able to do it for you without issue. Well, they um, say they're still going to let one. you see them all. They say Got here, it. they do understand that sometimes you want to see them all in one place. So they're still going to let you do that. So gotcha. I don't know. Yeah, so that's yeah, good. And open activities and closed activities related list and the calendar. So it doesn't look like reports. So you'd be able okay. to see it on a deal, but maybe not in like a pipeline report. Yeah. Well, it's good stuff. I'm excited. This is going to change a lot of things, though. I mean, I yep. imagine it will whole... require a lot of updates. So there's a decent yeah. amount of things that are going to be migrated by default, and there are many that will not. Um, anything that's not going to be migrated by default is going to have this very annoying little pop-up on it for the next couple weeks until uh, November 1st. So it does make it clear what's going to need to be migrated, but just expect those are going to keep blinking at you until you move things over. Yeah. Are there going to be any a lot of custom functions that are going to need to change that like specifically are calling? No, Just most wondering. of the time via the API, you're calling out a specific module name. Like they've always exist as different APIs behind the scenes. Um, yeah. So it shouldn't cause too much pain and suffering from like a deluge functionality perspective. And I imagine everybody has probably seen this pop up if you're watching us on YouTube. It's coming up uh, when, every time you launch the CRM. So uh, hopefully, you know, get those things fixed. And away we go. But uh, big, big, big update. I would say major update for, uh, for Zoho here. All righty. And moving on with the news. Um, this one has Tyler and I shaking our heads quite a bit this morning as we were discussing this. <clears throat> In the CRM, you actually have an external customer portal. Um, it is rarely used, at least over here in the world of Zenata. <laughs> it has been rarely, rarely, rarely used. Um, I used to use it quite a bit in the past. Um, and by the past, I'm talking five years ago or so. And, um, I swear it was free. They're now saying it's $5 per user per month, which is a decrease from the old pricing of $10 per user per month for people that were using the external CRM portal. Um, I'm a little baffled by this because that is super expensive. Uh, even it's if it's very box. expensive and it's it's one of those things like maybe we are reading this wrong right but essentially what it says here and, and brett kind of has it highlighted if you're watching on uh youtube is the price of portal user licenses is now five dollars per user per month so in my eternal optimism i'm trying to think okay maybe they mean five dollars per zoho user per month and then you get those portal users within that bound but that's not really how it reads. That That's my optimism no. brain kind of looking at it. What it reads like is that you will be paying $5 per portal user per month. Um, so the breakdown that it has, you know, of one to a thousand users used to cost $10 per user per month. Now that'll cost five. But, you know, you do that quick back of the envelope math. And that means if you had a thousand portal users, you're paying $5,000 per month. Just doesn't sound quite right. And so, you know, for context, we run our client portal out of Zoho Creator and, and we have a thousand users in that portal. That costs us $3 per user per year to maintain that level of access. So this is a massive multiplier on a creator portal. Now, obviously, creator portal requires a ton of customization. You have to build it, right? Whereas this is something right. where once your CRM is done, this is just going to work. Um, but then you compare it to something like Z portals, right? And it's just hard to see how you'd want to pay that much 
per user per month. I mean, to get your money back on that, those portal users better be really active. <laughs> you know, they better be in there doing things very regularly for that to be worth, you know, the the price on the box. So maybe we're misunderstanding. It, it's totally possible. Uh, if anyone yeah. wants to leave us a comment, let us know if we're just misreading this. And it is maybe my optimistic approach where a team of five <laughs> with a thousand portal users would be paying 25 per, per month. Um, <laughs> but I don't, it's not how it reads. No, it's not um, because it's, it's clearly paid. saying here, if you have one to 1,000 licenses, number of licenses, one to 1,000. Yeah. You're paying five dollars per user per month because it was never added on. It was always I, I I don't know when this old pricing came about. I'm baffled by this, so we're yeah. gonna have to do a little more checking into this. Uh, also, if you are using the portal in the past, it's been interesting because there were only certain things. They've been adding more to it. You could always do deals and accounts and contacts. You could also you know in the associated accounts, you could look at documents and users. So there's some management that people could do, and everything was kind of at the account level. So yeah. you're giving an account and people in that account access to the portal um, and they could basically update their information and do various things in there. Um, that is now, you know, but, but that was it. And, but there are now more related modules um, that can be added. So related modules from the marketplace, they're saying when you add them in, all those fields can now actually be seen um, and you can actually share those. It is very bizarre though. If you read the comments that are after on this as it relates to the portal, it's only plugin extensions and modules that are installed via the marketplace. In other words, if you're just doing one that's just not installed via the marketplace, like in the back end of Zoho, like projects and desk, which is just in the back end, that's not considered a marketplace extension. So those things aren't showing up. Um, but then there's also comments here that, you know, Sorry, guys. It doesn't even matter if it's a marketplace app. People are saying they're not seeing anything yeah. show up. Anyway, much to much yeah. to discuss. At the end of the day, you know, if you're looking for a portal based on this pricing, I think Z Portals is probably still option number one, right? I mean, fifty bucks per month is their baseline, which gets you, you know, a bulk of usage. If you have really intense usage, they'll do some custom pricing based on the number of kind of hits to the portal. Um, yep. But I mean, five bucks per user per month, man, that is just a lot of money. As a lot of money. That means our portal would cost us 30K a year. Yeah. 30, 30 40K a year no. for the same number of users. 30, 60,000. Yeah, 60, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because 5K a month. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. 60,000. 20 dollars. times more. 20 <laughs> times more than what we're paying now. So we'll stick with our portal. Uh, and I'd recommend you check out Z Portals. But if we're misunderstanding this, uh, yeah, someone let us know because that's yeah. kind of what I'm hoping yeah. at least. And uh, I did a. A nice little Z portal overview, kind of a full deep dive into Z portals with the founder, John Mark Bantock, and it's over on our YouTube channel. Just search Z portals. There's two of them. I'll look for the one that was 2023. Uh, all right. And moving on with the news. Well, we've got exciting enhancements to motivator for Zoho CRM. And I actually am kind of excited about these. So Zoho motivator is now part of, it used to be its own separate application. And we actually used to do a lot of development around Soho Motivator, kind of a cool little thing. So yeah, we had some pretty big sales teams actually running Motivator on their TVs, right? Like in the sales yeah. pit, right? Hey, John just closed a big one. Boom. He's now number one, right? And it would kind of do the rotating contest mode type things. Um, you know, so we didn't use it like for everybody, but it was perfect for that. Right, right when you needed that type of UI. So they got rid of it. So like Tyler said, this would be something you would throw up on a TV screen. It would be real time. So maybe you've got a bullpen, you've got people sitting there, they're making phone calls, they're trying to close deals, they're trying to sell products. Um, we had a big uh, company that sold CBD products and you know they were selling them, but it was they were through distribution, major, major uh, uh, manufacturer of those. Yeah, not so, selling by the bottle, selling by no, the no, pallet. No. <laughs> by, by, <laughs> yeah. You know, crates and cases. Uh, to, you know, to basically places that, that would sell it. So they, they were going through and, you know, making their phone calls and getting their orders and doing it. And it was, a, it was real time. You had the person's heads and they're kind of moving up and down and you see what their sales numbers are and, you know, who's the leader in each category. Um, and it can keep people really kind of motivated. Uh, anyway, they deprecated it. They moved it into CRM and it just wasn't quite a hundred percent what was over in the old motivator. But now they're kind yeah, of was, putting some stuff back in. 
And it was good, honestly, that they moved it into CRM. It did lose some functionality, but it made it so that you didn't have to buy it separately. Obviously, if you were on Zoho One, you already had it included, but like, you know, it was always a tool as an extension of CRM. It didn't ever need to be its own app. So it's kind of nice when they moved it in so that people are just on CRM get access to it, but it did lose some of the nice little views that we always like to use. Um, But now they're bringing a lot of that back, right? So you're actually able to do almost more than you used to be able to do with these like rotating TVs. So if you're watching us on YouTube, they've got like a KPI call out. It rotates into a chart down at the bottom, right? They've got this little banner going of, hey, someone hit a milestone. Shout out to that team. I mean, some of that's new. It's not just replacing what used to be available. You you couldn't do a little banner like that or um, the custom charts weren't a thing. Uh, you did have a chart view in Motivator before, but it was like hilariously bad and you couldn't customize yeah. it. So being able to make your own charts is really nice. Like, hey, who's selling the most of this product, right? Put a bar chart on that or, you know, things like that. Um, you know, on track versus off track is really nice. So if you set up some targets, you can now have reports that kind of compare sales against those targets and see where you're yeah. at. Um, that's a big one, <laughs> right? That is a huge one uh, for this type of tool. So yeah, really nice job to the team. They're kind of bringing in the functionality that used to be there as well as some new stuff. Um, yeah. That tool, I think, even better than uh, it used to be. Yeah, so if you've got a bullpen, you know, I mean, with everybody in remote work, it's kind of one of those things where, you know, um, one of the things that might be nice about Motivator, I'll throw a hint out here to the team, is like to, uh, I guess, to have something where you could click it and it would pop up a separate tab that you could just, have that's running the motivator because everybody's working remotely now. Yeah. Right? Less TVs it's, nowadays. <laughs> right, right, right. So you can kind of do that and see where everything's at and what it's doing. Um, but uh, anyway, great, uh, great job. They continue to improve. We haven't seen anything done on this in a long time. So I'm really glad to see the, the team still working on this and making some enhancements to it. So very, very Sweet. cool. And moving on. Um, all righty. This is a very, very granular, very, very, very specific. I have a feeling, you know, I, there's got to be a client around here for this, but we're moving on to Zoho Expense. And man, they blew out the uh, travel part of this on corporate travel management now. So it's going to take a lot of work to set up and a lot of work to configure, but uh, you can put in all your preferred airlines, you can put in all your preferred booking platforms. Um, uh, you know, they're they're using a self booking platform. Sabers get there uh, yep. to do this. You can set up, you know, the the overall booking tools and what you can do and the preferred Come travel long partners. Way Come a What's long, that? long way with Zoho Expense. It used to be very feature light, you know, but uh, yeah, yeah, they've done a lot with this over the years. It is an app. I'll admit, my eyes kind of glaze over. I always defer to you in the show to talk about expense. <laughs> But they've done so much with this application over time. Like, you know, periodically when I have to touch it to kind of help out a customer with it, it's like, oh, well, that's better than that, how that used to work. Yeah. Um, you know, almost every time that I touch it. So, well, yeah, it, it just used keeps to be, better. you know, in the past, someone would say to me, oh, we use Concur. That's the 800 pound gorilla in the expense yep. space, if you're unaware. And it kind of integrates with everything and integrates, you know, doesn't integrate with the whole books, but it integrates with QuickBooks and, you know, and the zero accounting clock. Yeah. All, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and NetSuite and all the big accounting packs. So Concur was kind of the 800 pound gorilla, did everything and slowly but surely Zoho has just been adding on, like you say, feature upon feature upon feature to getting it to the point where it's getting close to parity. And I think if anybody is actually on the Zoho finance suite, um, this just makes a ton of sense. You can go ahead and let go ahead yeah. and use it. You know, you know what it's what, funny what they, not to go go ahead. No, I mean, the big thing that Zoho needs to do on this is they need integrations with ADP. They need integrations with Paychex. They need integrations with Trinet. They need all of the big, the big, big, big payroll platforms out there. They need integration with QuickBooks, right? Yeah. Because for, for payroll, everybody's doing payroll. That's where expenses come in. You want them automatically pushed to your payroll. You want, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, and it's it is interesting, you know. You, you kind of open this segment with the comment, "Hey, you know, this must have been for some big customer, right? Who need that?" We've always had the tinfoil idea that sometimes these features get added with large customers. I had it happen recently, and I won't spoil what it is quite yet. 
because I want to see if it ends up being a product update like this. But for a large user account, Zoho actually went in and added new functionality to how workflows work inside of projects just for that user. And I'm betting it gets rolled out universally because it is universally useful. So there's now some credence to our conspiracy that sometimes these things come about because of a large customer's need. Um, but it's kind of nice if you're going to build it for one, deploy it for all, right? And now everybody well. can benefit from, you know, the functionality. Might as well. In our next story, we'll head on over to the team who helps who builds the office software over at Zoho. And they never stop working. I love these guys. Um Anyway, they have really made some enhancements to the all new Zoho Writer desktop app. Um, it is offline. It requires no login. It requires nothing. You can log in. You can use it. Um, it is a super nice, uh, super nice app. It's for uh, both Windows and Mac OS as well as Linux. So uh, go ahead. Grab the all new Zoho yep. Writer. This is one of my favorite Zoho applications. I know that <laughs> for a lot of people, it's it's not the, the thing you got to get used to with with Writer. And I don't know why the, the Zoho has done this, but they have their entire control ribbon literally sits over on the the side, right? So. Um, they are making some little, you know, this is kind of nice, this new little ribbon across the mm -hmm. top to be able to control uh, various fonts and features like that. Uh, that's kind of new, but all of your main controls sit over on the left-hand side panel, which yeah. is collapsible. You can open it. Everything kind of sits there. Once you get used to it, yeah. you know, you get away from Microsoft Word and how everything sits across the top. I think it blows the page open more. I think it makes more sense. And yeah, I'm anyway. kind of thinking about it. It does kind of make more sense, right? Because a writer document runs top to bottom, not left to right, right? Yep. So you're really more concerned about squeezing any of the vertical space, right? Especially on a widescreen monitor, even just, you know, your normal 16 by nine, you have a lot more horizontal to work with than you do vertical. So it actually kind of makes sense to put it on the left-hand side. I mean, it's just a little different, but once you do get used to it, um, yeah, it's not much of an ongoing issue. The one that gets me is the tabs, the bulleted lists where tab doesn't move it over. You have to do uh, command M if you're on Mac. Um, yeah. But again, it's like once you know, you know, and then you're good. You know, they might have fixed that on this desktop app. I'm, I'm going to have to download it and play with it. I'll let Sticking you know. with command M. It works for me. Yeah, it's... Uh... Anyway, nice job to the uh, the writer team there. And uh, there we go. All righty. And yeah, moving on with the news. Um, so the confusion of Zoho Sign automation credits and Zoho Sign credits and all of this is uh, being cleared up. There are no longer any uh, automation credits so nice automation job. credits are right. the free credits you got with zoho sign they yep. are now actually called complimentary credits and this is a good and move um, they made them match the pricing the, the usage yes, scheme. that's yeah. the big thing right is that the way that it works with zoho sign credits and they changed this i think like last year is that it takes five sign credits to create a document via api uh it would take one automation credit to create a document via API. You got X number of automation credits for free every month based on the number of users. And then, you know, you can purchase additional credits. And it would actually oftentimes be confusing for clients because they're like, what's this automation credit? Is that the same? Is that different? Why is it used in different increments to do different things? Um, but this is really nice. So they're moving it all to a consolidated system on the Zoho sign credits. And the big one here to keep in mind is that this actually saves you money um, because different actions in Zoho Sign use different amounts of sign credits, whereas they all use one automation credit. And so anything yep. that uses that isn't creating a document generally actually uses less credits than creating one. So this actually gives you a little bit more mileage, right, to use the free credits. If all you're doing is document generation, then it's all the same. Right, it all just comes out the wash, doesn't really matter. This just simplifies things for you. Uh, but if you're doing things like getting data about a document, right, or triggering something when the document is completed, 
then this will actually save you uh, some credits. So good move, Zoho. Okay. Nice job. There is no need to have two credit systems running in parallel. Um, yeah. Great idea to I just I do think there's these. an error, though, on this. I, I, have a, I think this is a copy and paste here, right? Because there was no limit. It was 10 automation credits per No, there it is. User. 50 is your cap. 50 is your cap it on was. the freebies. Yep, 50 is your cap on the freebies. So you only got 500 automation credits for free, and now got it. Yep. Got it, got it. Okay. Yep. Fantastic. All right, so now they're all the same. You got the complimentary ones. They just get added on in there and yep. away. Good job, you. Zoho. Fantastic. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, we talked about this earlier, they may think it's expensive, but because we have some really large clients that send out thousands and thousands of Zoho signed documents on an automated basis, um, it is <laughs> way cheaper than everybody else that's out there. Yep. I About mean, half the price versus DocuSign or Adobe. Yes, yes. So um, you, you are getting a lot of bang for your buck. Now, Zoho Sign team, if we have your attention, we just paid you a compliment. We said, good job. Please improve your user permissions inside of, 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 of Sign because right now that's the biggest problem we have. Is big limiter. Basically, you see everything limiter. or you see nothing. And Makes so, sense. like, you can't have, like, a middle-level manager and sign seeing their employees' documents unless they manually share them or you try to share them via API, which is its whole own cluster that you don't want to try to get into. No. Um, so, yeah, they need at least one more role, right? Like, a non-God mode admin, but also not, like, the baseline user. There has to be some well, type of role hierarchy. CRM. I, I think you, you need God and I think you need to be able to set up the various groups and you give people permission in that groups. Because to me, you might want to have, you know, in larger companies, you might have a, a manager who manages five people and those five people manage five people and that, you know, and that guy yeah. needs to see everything roll up, but the guys just need to see their own. If they yep. fix that, as all sign moves from a maybe to a yes. I mean, it's yep. still missing the, you know, identity verification aspect that you get on some of the larger ones that are out there. But boy, I mean, I guess we might still leave it in maybe, but it, it definitely is now up to 99% of the companies would perfectly be fine with it, right? Yeah, be a, but it's that it, classic thing, thing, right? You've got an HR manager, they need to see employment contracts, but you send out a, I don't know, mergers and acquisition contract, letter of intent or something. You don't really need them to see that, um, nope. but there's really no middle ground. Um, so well, I mean, yeah, the thing for us too is we send out offer letters, right? Yep. So, you know, we have everybody in our company using Zoho side for everything. And, you know, if you give just a person an admin role, because maybe they, then they can see everybody's offer letter, they can see, yep. you know, internal agreements and contracts that are signed internally, yep. not just, yeah, it's, it's messy. So work on that. All right. And Zoho Desk is uh, adding more instant messaging. Um, so now you, in Zoho Desk, you can now connect with your customers via WhatsApp instantly from within the contacts module. So it's a uh, real-time WhatsApp integration into Zoho Desk contacts module, which is fantastic. Um, I'd love to see this in CRM as well. Um, that'd be super, super nice. Uh, you know, so much of the world uses WhatsApp. It's what I communicate yeah. with all my friends south of the United States <laughs> constantly. It seems to be... It is the major, I would say, for almost all of, you know, Mexico, Central, and South America, it's like the app, you know, it's yep. what everybody uses. So it's, um, I don't know how it is in Europe, if it's got huge adoption over there. I think it does have a pretty decent adoption over there, right? Yeah. Um, anyway, great Not application. Asia. Asia's got WeChat and Line, but uh, South America, huge, huge, huge on WhatsApp. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the other thing is too, it's, it does amazing voice video calls, uh, yep. group calls, group chat. It's just, you know, it's kind of your all in one, everything. Um, you know, I'd love it if we use, if you got rid of everybody's proprietary, proprietary SMS, <laughs> you know, proprietary things, it's, it's super nice. But this would be, I mean, there are a lot of companies, you, this solves a big SMS voice problem, right? If you get this yep. fully integrated into, uh, into CRM, but I know they'd have some integrations, but I don't think we have anything native by Zoho yet, right? I don't think anything native. I, I think they're working on it. They're building more like native SMS and IM functionality for CRM. I don't know if WhatsApp is deployed yet, but I think it's on the roadmap. Um, if it's not oh. already out, it's kind of a native tie-in. Yeah, might be. I want to just check something out here. 
WhatsApp. We're a lot of stuff on WhatsApp. Um, I'm not seeing anything as native. native. Nothing Zoho native. I had a really interesting chat with someone the other day around uh, the Zoho marketplace. If you're watching us on YouTube right now, which is people just randomly are using corporate logos, right? So, so like if you look for the Ring Central, right? Uh, you know, we'll just type in Ring Central here. If you look for a Ring Central extension, and you kind of go and you go, oh, Ring Central. You know, they're actually using like the Ring Central logo. Yeah, it's <laughs> the logo stuff. for their app. Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably not a thing. Yeah, probably right? not allowed. Probably, probably not, not allowed. allowed. But anyway, it looks like there is no native WhatsApp CRO. So uh, anyway, good job though. Very cool. So Odess team, that's gonna make a lot of people happy. All right. And wrapping things up here, um, we've got some knowledge base updates and enhancements inside of Zoho Desk, a little more Zoho Desk news. Uh, the big one for me here, Tyler, is people actually can rate an article. So if you have a knowledge yeah. base article, people can get it. You can go, is this helpful? And they go, I like it, I like it, I don't like it. You know, I viewed it X number of times. Well, maybe you went in and you completely revamped the whole article, but you left the name yep. and you made major, major changes to it. You can go ahead and reset all of those metrics so that yep. um, you can see how the new article's doing, right? Yep, and so, people were already doing this. It's just that you had to basically delete the article and replace it, and that's a pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, it's I mean, similar to like an NPS survey, right? Like ideally you improve over time, Right. And yep. so eventually you want to kind of cut off and say, okay, how have we trended since this day, since this day? Um, and then you can selectively reset them. Uh, I would say if you're uh, resetting dislikes, reset likes as well. You know, don't, <laughs> you got to be honest <laughs> with yourself. That ratio is important. So don't just go in and reset the dislikes every time. Um, but it is, really you might want to leave right? the views. You might want to leave, you might the, views. leave the views. Yeah. yeah. On, the, on the page, but. Just because it helps you understand what's popular, what's popular topics, you might want to flesh out more. Um, but yeah, kind of nice. You know, you might have wrote an article, you get some feedback. People are like, "This is bad. It's unclear. It's outdated." Right? Like, "Hey, you updated your tool, and this doesn't work anymore." Um, but eventually, it's it's good to clear the slate, right? If you do a rewrite. And then one other quick little thing here: if you are cloning an article, you can now uh, select the category for that article when you clone it. So. Very nice. Very, very nice. You don't just have to do this after the fact. Yep. And Tyler, that's going to wrap up the news for the week. So let's, uh, what do we got for an implementation of the week? All righty. So this is an implementation that we did over inside of Zoho Inventory for a custom bill of materials. Um, we essentially are using the inventory custom modules for this. I think this is the first implementation that we have uh, I've really used this for. So this is part one. It's very likely there's going to be a part two for this later um, that will include a little bit of creator development. But this is kind of the inventory management piece for like bill of material style items. Um, so for this client, they're a client where some of the products they sell, they manufacture from raw materials and some of them they just resell. So our goal was essentially a way to build them a flow where they could define a bill of materials for the things that they do manufacture. And when they sell them, the inventory should be adjusted accordingly so that we're able to, you know, decrease raw materials and increase finished goods. Um, so to kick off this process, uh, the finished good items are essentially added to a purchase order associated with one of those internal vendors, right? So the internal vendor is basically our client's name and then the type of manufacturing that that particular uh, plant or team might be doing. Um, when that purchase order gets marked as issued, that's where we did it here. It could really be anywhere in the flow for a purchase order. A custom function will trigger that will generate an inventory adjustment, essentially decreasing the stock of raw materials that are required to make the finished goods that are on that purchase order. And it takes into account the quantity ordered, right? Everything there and essentially maps it out. So that's one side, right? That's going to decrease the stock value of our raw materials. In parallel, it'll actually also generate a purchase receive connected to that purchase order. Then the purchase receive will contain those finished goods. And so in this case, once manufacturing is done, we basically mark that received as received 
and the inventory for finished goods will increase. Now you might be asking, you know, where's the bill of materials, right? So you're talking about these cool records that are generated, but how are we actually determining which raw materials go to which finished goods? Um, so what it's essentially doing is referencing some data that Lucas and JP set up in custom modules. Um, so there's three modules. There's essentially a record for the bill of materials, a child record for the raw materials that go in to that bill of materials, and a separate module for child data on the finished goods that come out of those bill of materials. Now, the custom modules actually work really nicely for this. So you can create lookups between your different custom records that you have created. Um, this process can also be used to create multiple finished goods in a bill of materials. So maybe for a certain manufacturing process, you make item A and item B. Um, that's totally fine. We're able to do that uh, using this flow. Um, and then in addition, right, one thing that is really interesting uh, is that, you know, part V1.5 of this, uh, what the team is essentially going to do is also map in labor costs to these bill of materials. You can essentially have like a cost only service item for labor. So you could actually be calculating the cost of labor to manufacture these using the bill of materials. Um, and then V2 will very likely be a creator app, right? Because there is a bit of a process here where, you know, a purchase order is issued. We're immediately decreasing that inventory adjustment, but there is still a process to actually manufacture it before that purchase received should be considered received. So V2 is very likely going to include a creator build where when that uh, purchase order is issued, it'll basically create that manufacturing record, which will track through the process. And once it's done being manufactured, we can actually then mark that purchase received as received to increase the uh, finished good inventory. So really nice flow. It's kind of getting into like ERP light functionality. I still wouldn't consider Zoho inventory to be like a full on ERP in the vein of like a NetSuite, SAP, you know, Dynamics. Um, but things like this get us a lot closer where, you know, if you do need some of that manufacturing flow and you need some of that like labor cost tracking, you can actually get there using some of these custom modules and, um, you know, deluge functions. Super, super nice. I mean, what can we say? This was a monster. <laughs> so much really going on. Yeah, I just love it. will be real interesting, right? Because it's, we're really shooting for like a full, like, you know, manufacturing floor Kanban view on the big table, you know, person walks up, they grab the next one, right? It gets assigned to them. So this is really like the inventory side and then the yep. like workflow management side will come later. And I, I'm really excited because it's something that a lot of people need um, where if we kind of work out both sides of this, um, it could solve a lot of problems um, for people who need, you know, just the lightweight bill of materials. It's like, look, I don't have 50 warehouses all over the country. I'm not manufacturing in, you know, overseas at a scale of, you know, 5,000 employees. Like, yeah, in that case, you probably just need a full ERP. But if you need like an MRP just to manage some of those manufacturing processes, right. you might be able to actually get there using something yeah. like this. Um, um, so yeah, like big shout out to Lucas and JP. Uh, this is not an easy one to kind of work out, um, but I know it's going to drive a ton of value for our uh, our client. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well, Tyler, hey, you know, we do this thing called Azaz. That's ask and not anything about Zoho. And that's our show where we answer questions. And then this week, we were kind of going through the questions. I think we had, what, close to 20, right? And we're kind like of that. filtering out. We try to answer every single question. Sometimes we combine questions. Sometimes we just say, you know, we're just going to write you a quick little answer or we just determine we'll write an answer to them rather than add it into the Azaz show. But this week, Greg looked at a question and said, you know what? I'm just going to take care of that in our code share of the week. And so he has done shit. So, <laughs> and so he basically create a CRM sales order based on WooCommerce <laughs> data. Uh, the person asked, Hey, you guys talked about doing this, but you didn't say how, and that was, um, Matthias, uh, put that in there. And, uh, that was the question Matthias said, how do you do it? And well, guess what? Greg went ahead and did it. There's no explanation on this. It is just a random piece of code <laughs> dropped into the code share. Yeah, no this is a code share. Um, yeah, and I mean, 
important thing to note here, and this is kind of how we write a lot of our code, especially as a V1, is that this is just filling in the bare minimum, right? So this is yep. creating the subject line, the items. And I think if we scroll down, is it doing a customer search here as well or no? Yeah, so it doesn't look like it's doing the customer search. So this will require some updates. You know, you might need to flesh this out a bit. But what Greg's looking to do here is solve the hardest part, which is essentially translating the item list, right? You know, for each item on the WooCommerce order, you need to find the matching version in CRM. He's doing that based on SKU from WooCommerce, lining up with product code. That's pretty much what we always do. Um, all you would really need to do here is run some type of search on email if you wanted to add the customer as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully this is something that will save people quite a lot of time. Um, I will highlight there are some off the shelf integrations for WooCommerce. Uh, CRM Perks has a really good one. That's always where we might want to go first. But if you do find you need something custom, this will surely fast track your development. And if you look at this and your eyes just glaze over, well, you know, just go to our webpage and click on book a meeting. And we'll be happy to happy to help you out for a price, of course. Nothing in this world is free, Tyler. Except the code share. The code share is just free. The code share. Code share is free. And Clubs and Ada. Clubs and Ada is free. You some know. things are free. This YouTube channel is free. So maybe you can get YouTube there. YouTube channel is free. You don't have to watch some ads that YouTube forces at you. But, you know, other than that, you're good to go. All right. With that, speaking of that, let's head over to uh, Zanata.com and see what we got going on over there. Big shout out to Select Communications and uh, Jason Price for giving us a case study. Uh, really great client. I really enjoyed working with them. So we've got a brand new little case study from these guys. Um, they've been a lot of fun. And so uh, did some nice stuff for them. You can read all about yeah, lots it. Yeah, CRM, some desk, analytics, kind of, uh, yeah. you know, lots of work across the Zoho ecosystem. Uh, lots of deal flow as well. I mean, these guys are in the telecom space and they do lots of deals. <laughs> they do lots of deals. And so a big part of this kind of mapping out the process, setting up the task flow where each stage kind of queues up the next round of work that's needed to uh, get things done. But yeah, big shout out to Jason. Always a pleasure to work with. Um, and thank you for, uh, you know, offering to do a case study with us. And if you want to check out all our case studies, just head over to About and you'll see the team. And then you click on case studies and uh, all of our case studies live there. And you can scroll through, find maybe somebody who's close to your industry or does something similar, B2B, B2C, and uh, kind of read through what we did for them. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing something similar for you very soon. And with that, Tyler, you think we normally would end the show with a short little bit here, but uh, <clears throat> let's get over to the tip of the week and get right into this, shall we? So FSM launches last week. We cover it on the CRM Zen show. You start playing with it. Next thing I know, you and Freddie have sat down and spent gosh knows how long to produce an hour-long full product tutorial and overview of FSM. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so this is kind of a walkthrough of the full app. Really the, you know, every different uh, module and workflow. We spend a lot of time on work order management and dispatch. Um, that's really a big part that's always been tough to solve for inside of, you know, CRM or even a creator app. It's just, it's surprisingly tricky to give a good UI to do your dispatch because really what you need is like your list of work orders here. And then on the same page, you need the dispatch console. Sorry, I'm mirrored on the other side, right? Where you can kind of like assign out when we're actually going to do certain pieces of work. And they did a real good job. Now, obviously, with a version one product, you can expect there's going to be little odds and ends, right, that they're going to be filling in over the next, um, you know, month or two. Uh, but as a baseline, right, like if this is the release version of this product, pretty darn good, um, comes out of the box with CRM and Zoho Books integrations that work great. Uh, similar structure for workflows. So that kind of like if then logic and, um, you know, triggered actions can be done here. Uh, pretty clean UI. I mean, honestly, it's pretty darn solid. Um, I mean, there are some things, and so Zoho, if you're listening, and I've kind of been going back and forth with them to give some feedback, um, you know, there's there's odds and ends. I think the biggest thing they could do, there aren't a lot of pre-built uh, customer notifications. So like inside a Zoho desk, you can just check a box and it's like, oh, when you get a ticket, they get the confirmation, right? It'd be nice in something like FSM where like when you click dispatch on an appointment, meaning like we're on our way, 
if it could like automatically email them. Now you can just do that yourself with a workflow. Let me be super clear. It's not that it can't do that, but it would be kind of nice if there are a couple more like default functions in there that would do things for you. Um, but at the end of the day, um, really good pricing on this, way cheaper than Zooper, which is oftentimes what people end up going with. And a lot cheaper than the, having someone like us build this custom, right? The pricing from like is on a per zero. ticket basis, which is so unique, right? Per appointment, yeah, per appointment basis, but per it has unlimited users and it is separate from Zoho One. So if you do have, you know, 50, 1099s and you're like, man, I don't want to pay 45 a month for them. Great. You don't have to. Uh, this is just built totally separately. Um, so yeah, so talk about the books integration. We, we kind of covered CRM integration earlier in the show. Talk about the books integration. Yeah, so books integration is pretty simple. It's it's really like at the tail end of the flow inside of um, FSM. You know, the flow is request, estimate, work order, appointment, invoice. And so what you can do with the Zoho books integration is essentially replace that final invoice, which FSM can send. It can just send a PDF template similar to like CRM, right? If you wanted digitally payable, just integrate books, it'll swap them out, and then you'll just send it directly via FSM, but it's kind of the embed of books um, so that then it can be digitally payable on the fly. So very, very, very similar to CRM, CRM out of the box as its yep. own, then you integrate books and it replaces it with that. Got yep. it. And I think there's an estimate integration as well. You could technically replace the estimates module. I didn't dive too deep into that piece because I think a lot of people are just going to do that from FSM. Um, but yeah, for that final invoicing piece, uh, definitely worth taking a look at because getting paid quick uh, is nice, right? And and books will help you get there. So is there an API here? So like people that are still using QuickBooks online, right? Um, have, is there an API so where that invoice part we could auto-generate similar as we do in CRM? Yep. So yeah, you can write, uh, I don't know if it's fully documented and published yet, but there is an API for Zoho FSM. Yeah, it looks like it's, they actually have the web page live already. Great. Um, so yeah, there is there is an API for it and you can write deluge code and create third-party connections there. So if you wanted right. to like punt your invoice at the end over to QuickBooks, no problem. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. So overall, big shout out to Zoho. Great job on this. Uh, something I think a lot of people are going to need. Um, and shout out to Freddie as well. I kind of like put this big giant calendar block with very little notice for him and uh, gave him the agenda about 20 minutes before. Uh, and yeah, he did a great job kind of producing this and getting it over the line for us. So yeah, kudos and all happy around. Happy birthday to Freddie as well today. So very good. There. It's just wow. birthday. He is here in the studio, in his studio, recording this for you guys, even on his birthday. Dedication. And uh, uh, the team also took the time to take what you did, take the transcript of it, run that transcript through the uh, world famous chat GPT and kind of come up with a written version of uh, this with, of course, there's some custom stuff that they wrote themselves in here, but kind of a full breakdown of everything you say in there. So for those of you who like to read, like to skim, kind of want to go through all this, um, go ahead and head over to Zanata.com. And uh, we've got a new blog up, which basically everything you talked about and everything you did and what I just, the questions I just asked, they're all right here. And also if we got to give a shout out, well, I guess we should give a shout out to, uh, to, the FSM team, because I believe they are the first ever to um, make it to our yes category on uh, first real launch of the product. So yeah. <laughs> if you don't know over at Zanata, we have a resource library. We rank all the Zoho apps and yes, maybe, and not quite yet. Um, and so uh, out of the gate, this one was a no back in <laughs> for about three, four months. Oh yeah. When and the so first beta came out, it was pretty buggy. Like, you know, pretty darn buggy, you know, which is fine. It's a beta, right? That's why it's a beta. They want to put it out there and have everyone go, yeah, this is buggy. You need to fix this, this, and that. Um, so, yeah, they've definitely took their lumps at certain parts in the process, I'm sure, um, as, you know, they gave the feedback. But, yeah, at the end of the day, and now that it's fully released, it's it's looking pretty darn solid. And then, again, with some of these little odds and ends, like you guys, you know, for those of you who've been using Zoho a long time, you know, now there's every week <laughs> we're going to be talking about, oh, they added this. Oh, they added that. Right. So sometimes as I'm kind of rating these, I'm thinking, how is it as a platform? Right. Because little bits of functionality, they're just going to make a big list of customer feedback and bang through it. Yep. Um, so the odds and ends stuff will get sorted out. But as a core, like workflow and integration, it's really solid. All righty. <laughs> 
Well, great job on putting that together, and I'm really excited to finally have a really good FSM product. Yeah, so finally, finally. All right. All right, buddy. Well, another show is in the bag. And uh, yeah. with that, I guess it was a long one, wasn't it? Went it was style. a long one, yeah. Yeah. Holy shamoli. Anyway. Um, hey, as always, if you want to talk to Tyler or myself, well, you can just head over to Zanata.com and uh, click on book a meeting. We would love to chat with you and see how we can help you with your Zoho problems or projects. And on the website is also where you'll find complete episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, if you want that news delivered to your inbox every single Monday morning, please be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we'd appreciate if you would like and subscribe here on YouTube. Kind of let us know that we're doing the right things here with our content. And if this sparked any questions, comments, feedback, drop that in the comment section below. And you very well might be featured on next week's edition of Azaz. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Have a great weekend, everybody.